Emission duration in terms of emission spectroscopy is the length of time that light is being emitted by a substance, or in this context, the length of time that a substance is emitting photons. Emission duration depends on two things, energy input and the reactants. Looking at the reaction in glow sticks, the input of energy would be the activator, and the reactants would be the different dyes used in the glow stick. These two substances, the activator and glow stick dye, are combined, and the result is a color chemilucent glow the glow stick gives off. Reactions with the activator are what cause the molecules to emit photons. Once all of the activator has been used up through reacting with the dye molecules, the substance will stop emitting light. This is because the input of energy in the reaction is the activator itself. Therefore, more activator that's present in the reaction, the longer a period of time that the reaction will take place for. The structure of the dye molecule also determines the duration of emission. If a molecule has more available energy levels, it will constantly be absorbing and emitting more photons of different wavelengths than a molecule with less energy levels. This larger number of possible reactions decreases the amount of time that a substance takes up to use its energy input. Last week, we have established that a red dye molecule has a larger number of available electron energy levels than a green dye molecule because of its molecular structure. According to our reasoning, this would mean that when the same amount of each dye is mixed with the same amount of activator energy input, the red substance would stop emitting light before the green substance. This is exactly what was observed. Let's say that two people were charging their new iPhones. If person A charged their phone to 80% battery, and person B charged their phone to 60% battery, then person A will have given their phone a larger energy input than person B did. Even though the phones are exactly the same, if person A's phone has a larger energy source to begin with than person B's phone, and they're using their phones at the same frequency for the same activity, then person A's phone battery life will last longer than person B. Now let's say that person A and person B had both charged their iPhones to 100% battery. If person A uses their entire battery life on one continuous phone call, and person B uses their entire battery life through only periodically checking and replying to text messages, person B's phone battery life will last much longer. Not only does the duration of phone battery life depend on how much energy was initially in the battery, but also duration depends on how the type of activity or structure of use that was used to deplete the battery. Similarly, the duration of emission of a substance in emission spectroscopy is not only dependent on the amount of activator present, but also the structure of the dye molecule, which affects the type of energy absorption and therefore emission of that substance.